This video will discuss the total wave functions of the hydrogen atom quantum mechanical model system. So our model, as it has been in this chapter, is a single proton fixed at the origin, and then we have an electron which is free to move in three-dimensional space. Its distance from the proton is indicated by R, the spherical polar uh, coordinate radius. So we have our Schrodinger equation for this system, h psi equals e psi. Schrodinger equation specified by the kinetic energy of the electron and its Coulomb potential attraction to the proton. Our wave function psi nlm depends on three quantum numbers, nl and m, and the spherical polar variables r, theta, and phi. Our energy depends only on the principal quantum number n, which starts at 1 and goes up from there as an integer. We have uh, our energy E sub n equals a bunch of constants times 1 over n squared. So the energy varies as 1 over n squared as it goes from a low value back up to approaching 0. And we looked in the previous video at the radial wave functions for this system. So R, N, L of R. So the radial wave functions are a function just of the radius, the distance to the proton, depending on the quantum numbers N and L. And we have our angular part of the wave function, which is the spherical harmonics, which depend on the quantum number L and M, and the angular spherical polar coordinates theta and phi. So for each of them, they have a normalization constant then they each have a special kind of polynomial. For the radial wave function, we have the associated Laguerre polynomials. For the spherical harmonics, we have our associated Legendre polynomials. Then for the radial part, we have a polynomial times a negative exponential. And for our spherical harmonics, we have a complex exponential. Okay, so that's quite a lot of stuff in general until you've substituted in the actual values of n, l, and m you need, and then multiplied these two together. So we're going to see in this video what the values actually are of these wave functions for some of our, uh, some of our hydrogen atomic orbitals that we're familiar with. Uh, before we go on as well, the quantum numbers n, l, and m, they're all integers. n is greater than or equal to 1. We saw it starts at 1, goes up from there. For a given value of n, we can determine the allowed values of n. Or, sorry, a given value of n, we can determine the allowed values of l. It goes from 0 to n. For a given value of l, we can determine the allowed values of m. m goes from minus l to l, again, all three being integer values. And then finally, before we get started, <clears throat> a naught, the Bohr radius, is equal to 0 0.529 angstroms and angstrom being 10 to the minus 10 meters. And the quantity rho is kind of a redefined distance coordinate where that equals zr over a naught, a naught once again being the Bohr radius, and z being the charge of our nucleus here. So it's just the integer number of protons in our nucleus. These wave functions work for any hydrogen-like atom, and a hydrogen-like atom is anything with one nucleus and one electron. So we could be He2, we could use hydrogen, He plus, lithium 2 plus, beryllium 3 plus, etc. Anything with one nucleus and one electron. Okay, so let's actually look at some of these wave functions now. Psi nlm, when those equal 1, 0, 0. The only allowed value of L for n equals 1 is 0. The only allowed value of m for L equals 0 is 0. Psi 1, 0, 0 is the 1s atomic orbital. It's a normalization constant, 1 over square root of pi, z over a naught to the 3 halves, e to the minus rho. So it's just an exponential that decays away. There's no angular function. It's just a purely radial, spherically symmetric function, <clears throat> giving us the standard spherically symmetric 1s shape. For n equals 2, we can have l equals 0 and 1 and m equals 0 or minus 1, 0, and 1. Psi 2, 0, 0 is the 2s orbital. 1 over 4 square root of 2 pi, z over a naught to the 3 halves, times 2 minus rho, e to the minus rho over 2. Still no angular part, still only a radial part, but we're going to get 
here what is called a radial node from our linear Laguerre polynomial. So that's our 2s function. Moving on to the 2pz function, and we'll plot these all in time so we remind ourselves what they look like, but that's in a video down the line as well. Psi210 is a 2pz orbital. So 2 for n equals 2, p for l equals 1, and z for m equals 0. It's the same kind of constants times rho e to the minus rho over 2 times cosine theta. So that's where we get our dumbbell shape for the p orbital is that cosine theta uh, angular dependence. For psi 2, 1, 1 and psi 2, 1, minus 1, we have a normalization constant rho e to the minus rho times sine theta times e to the plus or minus i phi. So these two combined constitute the 2px and 2py orbitals, but neither of them individually is actually 2px or 2py. To get 2px and 2py for anything where m doesn't equal 0, those orbitals are not actually eigenfunctions of l squared and of lz, as we'll see. What we use there is a trick. Psi 2px is 1 over the square root of 2 for normalization. Psi 2, 1, 1 plus psi 2, 1 minus 1. What this does is it turns this e to the i phi into sine theta cosine phi. For 2py, that's equal to minus i over square root of 2, psi 2, 1, 1 minus psi 2, 1 minus 1. That takes e to the minus i phi, and it turns it into, cos, into sine phi. So for 2py, we have sine theta sine phi. And that gives us our dumbbell shape in the xy plane. Then we can move on to n equals 3, where there are more possibilities. So we can have l equals 0, 1, or 2, or s, p, or d orbitals. We can have m equals 0 for s, minus 1, 0, and 1 for p or minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 for d. So normalization constant, 27 minus 18 rho plus rho squared, a quadratic Laguerre polynomial, e to the minus rho over 3 now, rho over 1, rho over 2, rho over 3. That's our 3s orbital with two radial nodes, as we'll see in the future from this polynomial. 3pz gives us a cosine theta in there and a quadratic polynomial again. 3, 1 plus and minus 1 are 3px and 3py. We would pull the same trick there in order to get those into px and py from their standard uh, e to the plus or minus i phi there. Then moving on to the d orbitals, we have a quadratic function in cosine theta for our Leg associated Legendre polynomial, 3 cosine squared theta minus 1. For 3 dzx and dzy, we similarly pull this kind of a trick as we do for dxy and x squared minus y squared. But those have functions of sine theta, cosine theta, and then cosine and sine of phi. And for dz, dxy and dx squared minus y squared, we have sine squared theta, then cosine 2 phi or, co, or sine 2 phi for these two. So that is the basics of the total wave function for there. It's quite daunting if we have to look them up and then compute the correct, the correct polynomials, exponentials, and normalization constants for all three of these functions. It's typically what we do is there's some table of these and we look up the value once we know the given values of n, l, and m that we're looking for.